So with all of the 12 volt electrics out, we've not been able to run any water taps. So um, these things here, which normally are driven by a pump right at the other end of the boat. Um, well, that's all the taps in the boat actually. So the kitchen and the bathroom has had no running water for the whole day yesterday. So, so I had a, <laughs> I slept on it last night. I've got so far with the electrics and then I was uh, a bit confused about how to manage the next bit. Um, so I, I slept on it and I had an ingenious idea this morning. What I thought was, I know what I can do. I can plug the power supply or the battery charger in, in the bedroom because the, the water pump is underneath the um the well deck so this is the well deck the water pumps under there just convert the battery charger into a power supply and i've connected the switch cables up to the crocodile clips now this is a very very temporary measure there's the water pump in there you probably oh. <laughs> we've got running water you don't realize how much you need running water when you haven't got running water or how much you want running water you don't need it on the 12 volt uh, system is uh, we had a, a shelf over by the door so this is the the door out onto the stern deck there and uh, we've got a set of steps coming down that i've actually taken away and put to one side at the moment and behind the steps uh, was situated the old inverter so this is a sterling 1500 um, pure sine wave inverter that has a, a sort of three pin socket on the front of it that used to come out of there and go up you see that little white cable in the corner there that fed right back down this sort of electrical channel here through to the length of the boat and into a sort of, um, two-way switch at the at the other end so when it was switched to inverter it would take power from the inverter and feed that into the main consumer unit and when it was switched over to the other way it would take shoreline power and feed that into the uh, consumer unit so we don't need that switch when we get this done because uh, this is where the uh, inverter and the battery are going to go i had thought i'd put the battery up that end but it sort of gets in the way of the step so it's coming down to this end near the the new kitchen worktop here so it's going to be there the two terminals are here uh, accessible i might spin that around so the terminals are at the back um, because they only have one connection to each uh, terminal so uh, negative here will come out to the shunt and then the positive will come out to a fuse so I might put those around the other way um, maybe mount the shunt up on the wall there but um, we had this uh, shelf coming out here and a side to that which wasn't actually vertical it was slightly angled in weirdly um, so I've taken that off I'm going to build a new just slightly higher um, trying to miss out that uh, uh, 230 volt outlet and um, then out a bit further to encompass the battery so that I can keep the battery and the inverter sort of well apart. I want to put a vertical back on it so that I can mount the inverter um, in an upright position. It doesn't need to be, but I think for completeness, it would be quite nice uh, to do that. So next job is to go and grab some um, ply that I've got up in our little storage shed and then just just chop up two bits and get all that fixed in place so 
let's get on with that and I'll show you I'll show you that when I've done it I'm not gonna I'm not gonna feel me cutting wood and screwing things in place I'll just show you it when I've done connecting up the battery to the multi plus I've got the um, what I thought I'd do uh, as a as a sort of interim solution I'm gonna put a three pin plug on the end of this because this was the electrical um, hookup that fed into the inverter and I'm just gonna put a three pin plug on there and plug it into one of those sockets up there and then feed that in so that'll be the electric hookup and then I can connect the battery cables um, well, the battery cables are here they're already still connected um, that will come and go that there's a little um, there's a switch a, a master cutoff switch that will then go on to the battery positive and there's two black uh, negative cables that will go on to the shunt which will then go on to the battery so that will give me uh, battery charging for the lithium and uh, I've got a couple of these 10 millimeter cables so I showed you the other day actually a um, couple of those 10 millimeter cables that I can connect from the um, from the shunt and the master switch over to the um, fuse box over there so we've got the uh, battery and the inverter in place now they are the other way round than I, what I wanted them. I wanted the battery to be more under the steps here and the inverter to be more over this way. However, um, turning the battery around that way so it comes sort of lengthways out this way, it actually failed the step and we couldn't get the steps back in with the battery down there. Now, you can't have the battery underneath the inverter because the sort of warm air the cooling fan blows air out of the bottom of there and that would just heat the battery up so it's not not that great for it so i put them around this way and i put uh sort of a, a temporary structure around it so this this bit of the back that's the backboard that's permanent um and that's holding the inverter in place um nothing is connected yet um but it's a big step forward I think um, I've just disconnected the uh, solar power um, solar charge controller from the other set of batteries because they're dead and it's just doing nothing um, so what I can do is I can attach the solar to the um, lithium battery when I've got a couple of other bits and pieces in place um, so that that will charge that and all down in that bit there is where all the the sort of fuses and connections will go they will be sort of bolted to the floor screwed to the floor the um, shunt I've actually ordered a smart shunt and basically we had a shunt in the other van but to get it out meant sort of taking the big gauge out which <laughs> left a massive hole in um, inside the cupboard and it, it really wasn't fair to do that so I left the I left the the BMV 712 in the van now what this is is a shunt that um, replaces the BMV 712 because it has the um, to the battery so it'll come around that way that goes to the battery for the negative and then this goes to um, all the other negative uh, bits on the system so imagine this is the negative terminal of the battery and that just connects to the battery so it just sits in the middle and there's a couple of it outputs uh, there's a VE direct control and the other auxiliary battery and, and so on and so on. So it, it can connect to other other things. 
So a good thing about this is it doesn't come with the gauge, um, but it is it does have Bluetooth built in, so I can connect to it on the Victron Connect app and see all the same information about the, the sort of state of charge and the charging and so on. It, it's a battery monitor. It's the BMV 712 without the little round gauge that I always found pretty useless anyway. I always looked on the Bluetooth. So we're moving ever closer to having it all sorted out. Um, I've got to, I've got to really work out. I've got to get down into the engine bay and disconnect all the wires from there. I've taken the old um, Sterling Power uh, inverter away. That was that was sat here behind um, behind the steps here. Uh, this is a bit temporary, just to hold this up and give it a bit of strength. Um, and these, this cable here poking through, you might you might be able to see that. There's a couple of holes going through into the engine bay, um, which brought the old uh, battery uh, cables into the old inverter. So I've disconnected those from the inverter, taken the inverter out, and uh, now, well, because I'm not going to use those, so I'll just pull them back through, disconnect all those batteries, and uh, they'll be, well, left in place until I can get rid of them. So if you want, uh, if you want some batteries, uh, 12 volt batteries that are 4 volts, <laughs> there's a bit of scrap value in there because there's some lead in it. Um, <laughs> it'd be good to get rid of them because the, because we're building all this stuff over the starboard side of the boat, the boat's starting to lean a little bit to starboard, so I'm having to move some ballast onto the port side. Um, that's an interesting thing. So um, it's all coming along quite nicely. What I thought I'd do uh, as a as a sort of interim solution, I'm going to put a three-pin plug on the end of this because this was the electrical um, hookup that fed into the inverter, and I'm just going to put a three-pin plug on there and plug it into one of those sockets up there and then feed that in so that'll be the electric hookup and then I can connect the battery cables um, the battery cables are here they're already still connected um, that'll come and go that there's a little um, there's a switch a, a master cutoff switch that will then go on to the battery positive and there's two black uh, negative cables that will go on to the shunt which will then go on to the battery so that will give me uh, battery charging for the lithium and uh, I've got a couple of these 10 millimeter cables so I showed you the other day actually a um, couple of those 10 millimeter cables that I can connect from the um, from the shunt and the master switch over to the um, fuse box over there. Well, it's late on a Sunday evening and uh, I'm happy to say that all this lot is now in place. We've got um, shore power coming out of this 13 amp socket round here and back in into the inverter. So I've got the inverter charging the battery I've also got the battery protecting and I've got a fuse board a 12 volt fuse board in and working so I've got one fuse at the moment running this little uh, temporary rigged up um, battery charger so that's well amazing <laughs> it's taken me ages to get it sorted out because of all the different bits and pieces and the and the wires, I had to read the instructions three or four times and look at my sort of diagrams. Um, I did try to connect up the old fuse box to get things working so that we could have 
um, properly water draining out and water coming in and so on but uh, when I connected that up it reported uh, short circuits so obviously something wrong with the 12 volt wiring here so I'm gonna test that out tomorrow but that's it for now well all the uh, 12 volt electrics are now up and working we have all of the um, system from the uh, motorhome the Comanche fitted in to our little cubby hole here it didn't go exactly to plan but we've got the battery here that's not been that's an extra um, battery protector not been fitted yet um, we've got the battery here with the uh, negative cable positive cable coming up to a master fuse here going across to the master switch and then those are coming out this one comes out uh, to the uh, inverter so that that allows the uh, the inverter to provide 230 volt although the 230 volt side is not connected yet we've got a battery protect which comes off of the um, in the inverter charger so that comes back through here and charges the battery now we've got the uh, 12 volt um, shunt here which is a single connection to the negative side of the battery and then all other negatives go on to that side so this is this is now able to tell me exactly the state of the battery so the battery monitoring system just down the back there that's connected by this uh, blue wire back to the inverter charger and also the two wires on the bottom there that's connected to the battery and then to power it all up we have these other little cables down the bottom that connect it to power and to the uh, battery protect which stops the battery sort of over discharging quick run through of um, the sort of wiring of that you will have noticed that there's uh, two fuses coming out of uh, the master switch this one will actually go so th this one over here goes to the inverter and charger uh, but this one goes to the sterling uh, battery to battery charger which I have not fitted yet um, I've also got uh, two cables that run from the battery system over here across and into the cupboard uh, down down here which you won't be able to see much in there but you might be able to catch a glimpse of the new uh, fuse box there and some of the cabling already done so what i'm doing is i'm taking um, fuse by fuse identifying on the old 12 volt fuse box exactly what it is then uh, disconnecting that wire transferring it down to the new um, fuse block and uh, I did actually find out what the short circuit was uh, of course if you don't disconnect the old fuse box <laughs> completely from the old battery system that's gonna cause well actually it was I, I disconnected the live cable but it was still earthing or negativing so the negative cable was still connected to the bus bar and I'd connected effectively I'd connected the negative terminal on the lithium battery through that bus bar to the negative terminal on the lead acid batteries so no wonder there was a short circuit um, it was just all sort of getting confused so I'm very happy now because we have uh, we have the, all the systems working water uh, 12 volt lights super bright now um, these are always really really dim and I wondered 
because that I I really thought about just changing all the lights. Even these um, these little spotlights up here <laughs> were you you might not have been able to see those on camera before because they were running really really dim. That was like half a candle light. Um, but now all the lights on the 12 volt side are super bright because they've got full power coming out of that lithium battery because I've disconnected the old batteries completely and I've just run um, from, a, from a, a, a fuse on the new fuse box I've run a, a live cable up to the old fuse block so that sort of mimicking the battery connection and I've run the negative from the new fuse box up to the common bus bar on the old system but I've disconnected the positive and negative cables from that side to the old battery um, bank and now it all works it's been um, it's been a bit mind-blowing because uh, you know I'm learning as I go um, but you know it's a it's a good experience to do um, not that difficult you just got to make sure that you get the what the right cables um, and I you know I've been buying um, <laughs> loads of cable like this this is the uh, that's uh, four mil 12 volt cable because I bought four mil rather than the other um, this thinner cable the two and a half mil it's a bit more expensive but all the cables all the negative cables and the positive cables on the old system are all four mil and I think that's mainly because the batteries are up here and apart from these few lights in here everything else is so far away you get a lot of voltage drop on the cable so if you run a two and a half mil cable for um, well uh, what's that three meters is 15 feet so yeah so 10 meters or 50 feet um, you're gonna get a lot of voltage drop so the two and a half mil not quite enough it's enough to carry the power but you get this as as you as you go over longer distance of wire you get more resistance and therefore the voltage just drops down um significantly and you can't you got it's not recommended to have more than about three percent loss in voltage over the distance of a connection from the battery to the to the um, to the service or, or the the light or the pump or whatever you're running so <coughs> there we are um, I'm really happy so if you've uh, if you got any questions about 12 volt and lithium batteries inverters and that sort of stuff drop a question in the uh, comment section below and I'll endeavor to answer those to the best of my ability um, as I say I'm not a qualified electrician and I'm learning as I go but I've probably got a load of answers in here if you've got a question um, so drop it in and I'll do my best to uh, point you in the right direction